Do you know this feeling too? A calendar event just disappeared. You added it, but somehow it got lost. To make sure that it doesn't happen again, today I will show you the best features of the Apple Calendar app. Most people don't even use some of them, but they make your calendar much clearer and help you stay organized in everyday life. So let's start with the month view. In the month view, we can tap this icon to choose how we want our events to be shown. Compact, stacked or with details. You can also use pinch to zoom to change the view. To keep a better overview of your appointments, it's helpful to create multiple calendars. For example, I have private events in blue, appointments with my partner in purple and family events in red. That way I can see right away what the event is for. To create a shared calendar, tap calendars, then on the eye icon and select add. You can name it, invite people and choose a color. Once your family accepts the invitation, they can also add events. You can decide if the people you invite can only view or also edit the calendar. Just tap on the person and choose. If your calendar view gets too full, you can simply hide calendars by unchecking them. You can also add two other types of calendars calendar subscriptions, like the baseball shadow where you paste in a link and all the matches appear in your calendar, and holiday calendars. To better plan your week, go to the day view and tap multi-day. At first, you will only see today and tomorrow. To get a full week view, turn your iPhone sideways. You can also zoom in or out with pinch to zoom. To move events, just press and hold and drag them to a new time or a new day. If you get an invitation in a text message, the date, place and time are usually underlined. Just tap on the underlined text and tap add, the event will go straight into your calendar. Let's look at how to create an event properly. In the title you write the event name. Below that you can enter an address, a call link, phone number or FaceTime call. If you enter an address you can tap travel time below and choose your location. You can pick if you are driving, cycling or using public transport. Your departure time will be calculated automatically and added to the calendar. If you enter a call, a button appears that lets you join it directly. You can also decide if the event is all day or a certain time. The time can be set in 5 minute steps or typed in manually. Further down you will find repeat options and can choose which calendar the event goes into. For example family, work or private. You can also invite people to the event. One of the most important features is the alert. You can get two reminders. I usually set one for one day before and one for one hour before. At the bottom you can also add documents, links or notes. Reminders also help you stay on track during your day. Since a few months ago, reminders now show up in the calendar app and you can add them directly there. Just tap the plus symbol and switch to reminder. You will see all the usual settings from the Reminders app. Once you add a reminder, it will show up in your calendar. You can mark it as done there or tap on it and choose Show in Reminders to jump to the app. Some settings for the calendar app can only be found in the iPhone settings app. Go to Settings, scroll to Apps and tap to Calendar. Here you will find some useful options like Time Zone Override, by default, the calendar adjusts to your current location, but with this setting on, it will always stay in the time zone you select. Below that, you can choose alternative calendars like Chinese, Hebrew or Islamic. Another important setting is calendar weeks. This is turned off by default. Under default alerts, you can choose if you want to be reminded of birthdays, events or all the events and whether you want a notification when it's time to leave. So you will always get reminded to never be late. The default duration for new events is one hour. 
you can change that here too. You can also set which day your week starts on, usually Monday, and which calendar is your default, where new events will be saved. I have choose the private calendar because it's the one I use the most. At the bottom you can enable or disable location suggestions when creating events. With these tips your Apple calendar should now be much easier to use and more organized. If you're curious about Apple CarPay, take a look at this video I posted. Let me thumbs up and subscribe to this channel and let me know what are your thoughts about my English and my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye!